language uh, is important uh, especially uh, the mother tongue for every person doesn't matter where you're born it's a culture itself uh, you know it's a main vehicle for a culture uh, from one generation to the next uh, and we've seen that uh, you know especially in north america where aboriginal languages were wiped out and or you know so people are trying to revive those um, and it's, it's also a sort of uh, generally believed uh, fact that more languages you know a better human being you probably are because you have an opportunity to know different cultures uh, from different perspectives and that way you appreciate other people more uh, than if you didn't know the language uh, so it, it's uh, I think it's important that people learn um, languages so that we become a better society that's my view Hi, my name is Mike. I'm from Victoria, BC, and I work as a banker. My parents are immigrants from India, from Punjab. My mom's side grandparents lived in town. They spoke English as well, but we spoke Punjabi primarily in the house. Uh, when my grandparents on my dad's side came to Canada, I was about three, and they didn't speak any English, so we only spoke Punjabi with them and they lived in our house for about 10 years. I learned it through talking to my parents at home and talking to my grandparents. The way I'm trying to express something, I might not, not know how to say it in Punjabi, so I'll do like a combination and then I'll explain it to my parents like that. So if I'm like saying, I'll be like, I'm hungry, and then I'll, I'll say the rest in Punjabi, can you make me this to eat? Mixing between the two, sometimes we didn't learn the Punjabi word for certain things. So we would say everything in Punjabi, but then throw in a word like wrestling or pizza. I never learned to read or write Punjabi before taking this class. Since I started taking Punjabi at the university level, uh, one is that I I get to talk to my parents about one more thing. They get to see me learn um, this language that I knew how to speak, but I didn't know how to write or read. And I think that makes them really proud, especially my dad, because he was so like surprised how fast I like picked up on it. So it kind of brings us closer in that way because they are able to do another thing with me and like teach me something else um, and I'm really proud to know how to speak it and I and now I'm proud to know how to read and write it. I took Punjabi in grade 9 and 10. I believe in BC you have to take a second language so most people end up taking French but because of just the sheer number of kids that were at our school they offered Punjabi and they offered Spanish as well. Um, but it was great to have exposure to the language in a, not in a house setting, more, not in a family setting, but in an outside setting. Some of the kids were there because they already spoke the language. Some of the kids were there because their parents were like, oh, the school offers Punjabi and you, had it, you haven't learned it at home. Now is your chance to learn it. Not from us, but from a teacher. I, when I went to elementary school, we didn't have a lot of Punjabi kids in our school. But when we got to middle school or junior high, all of the schools kind of came together and there was all of a sudden, instead of like five Punjabi kids, there was like 50. I think one thing that was challenging was just the sheer number of kids um, and how loud it could get. So everyone would be pretty rambunctious and kind of rowdy. We had grade eights, nines, tens, all in one room, taking it all at the same time for one semester a year. And to have 40, 35, 40 kids in one classroom was, could be pretty hectic for the teacher. My name is Sadhu Bini, and uh, I've been in Canada for uh, 52 years now. <laughs> I had an opportunity to teach Punjabi at UBC from 1987 to 2008. Uh, and that came about because of my interest in the language uh, and being a writer, I was interested in, in that kind of work. And uh, the organization that I'm part of uh, for the last 25 years, it's a Punjabi Language Education Association. Uh, 
we always say that first English because we are we live in Canada, and uh, as a second language, uh, it would be great if one could learn uh, Punjabi. Uh, back in mid nineties, uh, BC brought in a new uh, language policy. They um, sort of uh, brought in six languages they identified that can be taught as second language in BC schools. I think it was. French, uh, German, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Punjabi, uh, and Spanish. So we, uh, before the policy was brought in, we formed an organization called BC Apple, British Columbia Association for Punjabi Language Education at that time. Uh, and uh, so we worked, uh, sort of we lobbied the government, it was the NDP government at that time, for Punjabi to be brought in. Uh, and uh, you know we try to convince them that uh, Punjabi could be it's a good thing if it was part of the regular um, sort of education system here the uh, NDP government uh, announced the new policy and Punjabi was one of those six languages so after that uh, there was a bit of a confusion uh, the politicians who sort of helped get Punjabi they also sort of gave an impression uh, to the people in the community uh, that it's, it's a done deal that you know Punjabi is uh, will be uh, taught in schools, but it wasn't so. It, it isn't so. Uh, people had to go and and actually ask the school, and then uh, there was a process uh, in place uh, that eventually it will be taught there. And when we went to the uh, Surrey School Board, they weren't willing to do that. They said you have to pay uh, if you want your language to be taught. They had no idea that it was this policy and still is the case that a lot of schools, school boards, they don't know because the government has never really uh, done its work and, and really sort of publicized it or told people. So anyway, uh, we formed uh, I think in, in 96 or 97 when we started uh, going to Surrey. Uh, this organization, Punjabi Language Education Association. Uh, we had one school in Vancouver. Um, they sort of interpreted the policy differently. They said uh, anyone who comes from a Punjabi background cannot take the class because they already know Punjabi. The whole idea was that, uh, you know, they, for them, uh, just to be able to speak few words is no. Punjabi said, you know, why do you spend billions of dollars on teaching English then? If that's the case, everybody speak English here, but we didn't get anywhere. This, it was totally racist uh, attitude that they had. So we didn't get any school in, in Vancouver except one. So any, anyway, uh, eventually there were some good people who sat down with us. And uh, so we had uh, a few schools starting, uh, I think in 98, 99, uh, in Surrey, uh, I think one or two elementary schools started at that time. And anyway, so it, it went like that and still is like that. Every school that we, add uh, we really have to work hard what i'm hoping is is that it becomes much a bit more regular that we don't really have to sort of you know keep on asking the school boards to to continue this uh, and the other is um, what's really lacking and and uh, not just here in bc but in north america we still don't have a place where a degree is offered you know, bachelor's or master's or, or a PhD offered in Punjabi anywhere. So that is one sort of uh, thing that I like to see. Uh, but at the same time, if we compare any other place with BC, uh, you know, uh, Punjabi is doing much better here. Things are happening, good things are happening, and we need to simply uh, add more to it than what we have right now. I think that passing Punjabi down to future generations is very important. I don't want our language to be lost. I feel like it's something that I hold very close to me and it's, it's such a huge part of who I am. It's how I communicate with my grandparents and I'm just so happy to be a speaker. I'm really proud that I am Punjabi, that I know how to speak Punjabi and I do want to pass it down to future generations like I, if I have kids I do want to make sure they know how to read, write and speak it 
and I'm gonna try my best to make sure that they're immersed in it from the time they're born. Uh, whether it's speaking it with me, whether it's attending Punjabi school, whether it's taking them out to a movie. I think it really connects you to who you are and where you came from. Because I wouldn't want it to be where Punjabi just stops with me. It would be really unfortunate and sad for me if my kids or my kids' kids like couldn't speak it. Um, will I teach my kids? Absolutely. Obviously, my parents will be part of the upbringing of my children. They speak Punjabi. Um, and that was part of my upbringing, so my grandparents spoke it. So there's a chance there's there's going to be some kind of handing down of the language that way as well. And I think if you teach a child young enough, they can pretty much learn anything, especially when it comes to language. We always sort of spoke Punjabi in the family, uh, but it wasn't uh, that easy because everybody else around spoke uh, English uh, and, and for them it was a struggle. We had to remind them every day and, and, and still it continues with the next generation now. Uh, my older granddaughter, uh, who's four, um, we can't uh, make her speak uh, Punjabi. If she continue to speak English and we haven't succeeded yet. The younger one speaks Punjabi, she's two years old, uh, she, you know, she listens and she sort of um, says things in Punjabi. So the community have to take uh, this uh, aspect of life growing up here more seriously. I think the younger people are actually doing that. Uh, younger couples, uh, we get sometimes uh, inquiries uh, in plea that people want to uh, teach their kids uh, Punjabi uh, and where they can sort of get help and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a struggle, but um, I think it's important though.